Hello, this is Mike Lively, and this is the second video in creating a 3D room in Flash Catalyst. And actually, we're going to do it in just six lines of code. Now, you can get all this information, it's all together, on my book site, which is professionalpapervision.wordpress.com, right here at the top. And what we're going to do is basically just uh, talk a little bit about why we're doing this and what are the advantages of using Flash Catalyst as opposed to... Uh, Paper vision. Now, on the book site here, you have creating the room, just a little blurb about it. You have the actual application, you can click and run. You have the source code right here, so make sure you run there and grab that source code. It's free for you to use. I got a little message on my YouTube the other day, say, hey Mike, I'd like to buy that thing that you put on YouTube. I said, forget that, it's free. Just download it from my Google code and use it. I don't care. Uh, the images used in this uh, image, however, were created by my son James Lively, so if you use his images, just uh, please acknowledge him. That's the only thing that I ask in this particular example. So there's James right there. He's becoming a great artist, so it's great to have artists in the family, and I have nine kids, so eventually somebody's going to be good at something. So probably some millionaires, some doctors in there, Lord knows, I need them. So let's come down here. You can actually uh, watch the video series here. There's, this is the second video. I've already done the first. And why are we using uh, Flash Catalyst? What's the big deal about it as opposed to Paper Vision? Well, here it is right here. Uh, it was created in only 80 lines of code. So this is fantastic. And 74 of those lines of code are auto-generated. So you're only really writing six lines of code. It uses very little system resources. Um, your computer doesn't run hot. So if you're used to running Paper Vision, as soon as you put something like this on there, next thing you know, your machine's just running hot. The processor's just, you know, over exercising itself. I mean, you got to create something that you can have lots of things in, and the way to do that is to manage your resources better, and Flash Catalyst does do that. The images are easy to replace. I mean, once you build the room, you can just start bringing in and out different rooms as you want to. Just build a really dynamic portal system. Uh, development time, of course, is decreased by a factor of 10. You're not spending all day doing this. You're spending 20 minutes doing this, so it's just fantastic. You're not limited to viewport size or anti-aliasing, and that's a big deal. Uh, you know, when you build something in paper vision, how uh, well it runs depends on how big the size of the viewport is. And you want to shrink that down as much as possible. Here you don't have to worry about that. And at the aliasing uh, really doesn't make a lot of difference. I've tried it. Uh, uh, bringing uh, the quality down to low or high, it just doesn't seem to make a difference. So, uh, And of course, it's just great fun. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to Flash Catalyst. We're going to finish up the application we're talking about. And then we're going to fix the skewing problem that I mentioned in the first video. So if you download my resources from Google Code, you'll find a file in them called My 3D Room. Go ahead and open that up in Flash Catalyst, and then you can follow along. Okay, we're in Flash Catalyst, and I want to remind you actually what we're doing. So let me bring up a graphic real quick. I showed you this graphic in the first video, and basically what we're doing here to create the room is we're actually folding these pieces inward, just like this. Now this is actually a two-step process. You want to rotate them and then you want to move them and so in Flash Catalyst we only have the ability to rotate right now not move in 3D and so we'll actually go into Flash Builder and move them but uh, I'm sure that feature will be improved on the next version of Flash Catalyst. Let's go ahead and uh, go back to uh, Flash Catalyst. So what we did in the first video is that we actually rotated our first panel so let's take a look at that real quick. So I'm looking at my right panel and if you hit the play button here you can see it rotates. And so I've rotated, and then what I want to do is, I, after it's rotated, then I want to push it over to the right side. So you see we've got that rotation, and once it rotates, you want to push it over, in a sense, to the right side. And so now let's do the next panel. So to do the next panel, just click on it over here in the uh, Layers panel, and come over here and click on Add Action and Add 3D. Now when you do that, you're going to get this, a 3D rotation to the left. You want to make sure that you go over here to your properties panels, make sure that's clicked on, and you want to rotate from 0 to 9. You're going to rotate in the opposite direction. So when you click that, you're not going to just get one rotation, but both of them are going to rotate. Isn't that cool? And in Flash Builder, what we're going to do is actually move those uh, with the 3D Move tool. And I'm going to go ahead and just finish this up real quick. You got the idea, okay? So uh, bring up the application, play around with it, and see what you can do. So what I've done now is I've actually added the uh, rest of the panels. You've got a, a right, left, floor, and ceiling. Let's go ahead and run that so you can see what happens. So everything just consensually just rotates out. So let me open that up a little bit. And there you go. Everything just rotating in position. So in a sense, the problem is that everything is at the center of the stage, right? Everything rotates right there. And once again, in Flash Builder, we'll move those where they're supposed to go. So uh, what's left to do? Let's add some interactivity. So we're going to go up here to the uh, States panel. 
And we have a transition from state one to state two. So when you click on this group, you actually want that transition to occur. So make sure that the group select it and then right click on it and go to add interaction. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is go to state two is when you're in state one. Let's go ahead and run that and see if it works. Okay, let's click on it. And everything rotates pretty cool, pretty cool. Let's save it. So go to file, save as, and make sure you give it the, the FXP extension if it's not there. Sometimes people forget to do that, and I think it's a bug, and I'm sure this will be fixed in the next version of uh, Flash Catalyst. And just go ahead and save that. And I've already saved it, so I won't save it again, but I will import it into Flash Builder, and then we'll be ready to start doing a little bit of coding. So we're in Flash Builder right now. Let's import our Flash Catalyst file. So go to File, Import Flex Project FXP, and I have it on my desktop, so let's go grab it. Here it is, my 3D room 2. Now I just renamed it because I already have a 3D room in there. So I'll just call it 2 and hit finish. And when you do, that'll import the entire project into Flash Builder and it will run just like it would in Flash Catalyst. And there's my 3D room 2, so let's open that up. Uh, go to the SRC, go to default, and hit main. And right now you see you see a Flash component. Where's the rest of the code? Well, just hit your control key, roll over that component 1, click on that. And that's the rest of the code. And all this code was generated automatically for you in Flash Catalyst. Isn't that wonderful? Let's go ahead and run it. So here's our panel. When we click on it, everything flips out. But nothing else happens. I'd like to click on it, go back, and be able to click on it repeatedly so I can repeat the process and test what I'm creating. So let's build that code right now. So I'm in the components section where all the code is for the component. So here's the code that you're interested in. When you're in state one, go to state two. But now when I'm in state two, I'm going to go back to state one. So just cut and paste that code. So I'm just going to grab this, copy that, put it right below it, paste it, and just change, oh, well, when I'm in state two, let's go to state one. Now the problem is, is I didn't create anything, any code transition in Flash Catalyst going back to state one. I could have done that. But I'm going to show you how to do that in Flash Builder. So we've got the first part. When we click on it, it will run. It will take you back to the previous state. Okay, and the states are basically run through transition code. Now what this transition code allows you to do basically is to run parallel transitions at once. It is wonderful. And you can see in the transition code, you're going from state 1 to state 2. So I want to go from state 2 to state 1. So let's just copy and paste this and change it back to what we want to do. So let me do that. So copy all that transition code. And let's open up the next piece and let's paste it. And I want it to go from state two to state one. So let me review. I've copied my code and I changed this from transition two to one. So we're going back. And now what I want to do is basically just rotate everything back. So let's reverse the directions. So in this case, I'm going from x equals zero to x equals 90. Let's just change this from 9 to 0. That's pretty easy, right? And the next one, let's go from minus 90 to 0. And the y is rotated in the other direction, so let's go over my y. And let's go from 0 to 90. And the other one is minus 90 to 0, so let's go from 0 to minus 90, or from minus 90 to 0. And that should reverse all my directions. Let's run it and test it. So when you click on it, it flips out. And you click on it again, it flips back. So when you click on it, it flips out. And you click on it again, it flips back. So let's finish all this up in the next video.